Hi, this caricature is of Steve Buscemi, and I did it with watercolor. And I'm gonna uh, hope to uh, show you or uh, tell you what my process was in this one. I started off with a small thumbnail sketch, and um, one of the main features that I recognized, the two main features that I recognized, because there were two, as I was watching videos before I did any of the sketching, was his eyes and then his teeth. I don't know which one came first, but they were both uh, very different than the normal person, uh, than the average person. So his, uh, as you can see, his teeth uh, in the reference picture in the bottom of the video, that's the uh, one of the. I had that one and another one that didn't show his um, that that crooked tooth that kind of stands out. You see that that one on the side, and I just kind of imagine that he had the same one on the other side. But um, but I had that and then the p other picture blown up on my screen, and I had a few other ones. I had like a profile one that didn't really help much. Um, so I, I I don't I didn't want to draw him as a profile, but. Um, nothing stood out, nothing helped uh, in that angle. So I just decided to draw him full face, but those are the pictures that I had in my screen that I was looking at. So as you can tell before, uh, in the very beginning of the video, the very first thing I drew was like his mouth and stuff. Um, and then the second thing I drew were, were like his eyes. Uh, I went on the side of his mouth and I, on, on the side of the page and decided to draw in the eyes separately. So I didn't draw like the overall shape of the face. I just went straight for the mouth, and once I kind of got um, an okay uh, mouth that I felt was was expressive of his mouth, um, I moved on to his eyeball uh, or his eyes, and I was kind of trying to figure out how to express his eyes in in, uh, in a caricature form uh, in a more extreme way. So, um, so I drew that separately, and then I kind of when I when I when I figured out how I wanted to draw the eyes, then that's when I kind of brought the eyes. Uh, on top of the mouth. Um, so anyways, uh, as you can see now, at this point I have pretty much all the features connected together. Um, I'm here, I'm just trying out a different way of drawing his whole features, just real quick. Uh, and then I went back to the, uh, the sketch there that I was working on. Um, the mouth, when he smiled, um, his bottom teeth were kind of sunk in. They didn't really come forward like the front ones. So I just kind of exaggerated that. And, um, and I'm try I really try hard to uh, draw the more extreme ones. I'm trying hard uh, to push myself uh, the most I can. And with this guy, I found that it was very easy to exaggerate. I mean, a kid could exaggerate that tooth pretty well and it, I mean it was just it was fairly easy especially the bug eyes he has like a mosquito feel or a, a centipede looking face kinda or a worm uh, so it was really easy to like exaggerate his features but it was very difficult incredibly difficult to uh, keep a likeness or even draw him looking like him because he he looked like a few other characters I, I i don't know the name of um another actor but he looked like him he also looked like a mr rogers and then there's a guy on like three's company which is like an old movie or an old tv show he looked like the um the landlord so he looked like a few different people but it was very hard to uh exaggerate him in a real extreme way and, and like keep keep a, a likeness it was very difficult um, I spent, I don't think I've ever spent this much time on a thumbnail as I did this time. I, as you know, usually when I'm doing like the small ones, as soon as I get a overall feel or I'm satisfied, all these little editing stuff you'll, you see me doing, I save that for like the watercolor paper or I save all that editing and stuff on the, um, like illustration board or whatever paper I'm working on. That way I don't lose all that detail and I can keep it if I want to just stick with a pencil drawing. Uh, so I normally save all that, but I just was really kind of frustrated. And by the time I knew it, a few hours had already passed. And I was already into like maybe three hours into this little thumbnail sketch. Um, so that's why a little bit later you're going to see me just basically, I just traced this small one. 
onto a little um, leftover watercolor sheet. That's why it's good to save some of your watercolor paper because you can draw like the real small ones. It'll 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 save some. Um, it'll help you use be useful for your uh, your supplies and stuff that you that you have. So I was able to reuse some of the paper. Uh, but anyways, um, I just I didn't think it would uh, I didn't think I would be spending so much time on this on this thumbnail sketch. But I really wanted a it was very challenging, but it, it, it helped me a lot to recognize, um, you know, how to, how to bring in likeness. And I don't know if I got the perfect likeness with this at all, um, but I just kept moving things around. Not not as a whole, but I just kind of started changing a few of the shapes and just as much as I could just to kind of get a likeness. So he was uh, fun to exaggerate, but very difficult to, um, you know, make it recognizable or to capture his essence. He for sure, I don't know, he had a, like a creepy feel to him. I don't know, maybe it was just his teeth uh, and his eyes, but um, he did, he, so I wanted to capture all that creepy stuff going on. But anyway, so he had a lot of different angles, a lot of different uh, shapes in his face and um, Axel, my friend here, uh, he lives in Houston and he's uh, he's a good artist and he said um, that the pupil needed to be bigger and that got me thinking, okay, so I, I, as you can see, I drew like the white, I drew that, the whole eyeball in there and as you, and the sketching right now, I'm, I, I just got back from work and I, I was thinking about that, so I came back to sketching and I just made it bigger and just decided just to knock out the white and just keep like the eyeball, the color, and then enlarge the pupil. And I, I don't know if it helped a little bit, but it did make it look cool. Um, so kind of like the sockets are holding the eye and it's kind of bug eyed a little bit uh, as though it were like a, I don't know, like a little cup or something. Um, but that does benefit to ask other artists and, and to get kind of get feedback. I was also told that I needed to kind of, um, you know, when, when I do these extreme ones, that you lose a lot of likeness. And I, I agree. I agree with that. Uh, a lot of times you can lose a lot of, a lot of likeness. But, you know, uh, you can also uh, gather and, and you can get a really, a really good likeness uh, by drawing someone real extreme. So, I mean, I also agree that you could you could capture someone's likeness even better than you would something that's a little bit more milder or something that's more portraity. I believe you can also get a, a really good likeness, if not better than, than something that's kind of mild. So it's, a, it's really up to the style and up to the artist uh, to capture uh, the essence, uh, whether they are drawing something extreme, and that's just kind of a personal preference, whether it's something extreme or mild, um, the, 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 the concepts is the same as, as far as gathering something uh, from someone's photo or video or someone that you know or see and you know gathering the unique items, the, the unique features about them and, and capturing the essence in those features and exaggerating them, whether it's making something bigger or making something smaller. Uh, but as you can see, I am at this point sketching out um, what I saw, I just really didn't want to, you know, uh, make it really large. I didn't want to go about the thought process and, and making it larger and doing all those things. And I, I just, I, I was kind of, I, I had spent a lot of time on this. So I was already kind of tired from sketching. Um, and I did learn a lot already at this point. So I just, just wanted to just trace it real quick and just color. And if I colored on the top of this regular paper, as you can tell, see, it's two different sheets of paper. It wouldn't really have worked out. Plus, it's like maybe 80 or 60 pounds. I think it's like 60 pounds. And the watercolor wouldn't really have, uh, it would have messed up the paper. It would have started wrinkling. So I just got some scratch paper 
uh, watercolor paper. And I'm using these really tiny brushes. I got this br brush from Michaels. It's like a Hobby Lobby. Um, it's like a, it's a red one that I was using. And um, it's real long. It's real thin. And I, I, it's not the one I'm using right now in the video. But I tried out the new brush that I'm talking about. And it didn't really, uh, I thought it would help because it's so long. I thought it would hold more of the ink or paint. And um, I wouldn't have to be coming back to get more ink from the palette as often. But I was wrong. It, it, didn't, it didn't really do that. So don't get those really long brushes. Um, just get the thin ones. And like, like, I don't know, an inch long or half inch long. But I got one that was like, what is this? One, maybe two inches. That's really long. It was too long. And it wasn't bending as well. So anyways, I just stuck with my old one. The white one that you see there that I'm using. That one I actually got out of Hobby Lobby. It was like a pack of four. It was a pack of four. And that was the smallest one in the pack of four. I think it was like seven bucks or 14 bucks or something. I think it was like seven. And uh, I've been using those for like years. So they're very, they're, they're, I feel comfortable with them. They're starting to bend a little bit because I leave them in the, the water in the cup uh, a little bit too long or I might have left it overnight one time but they, they're starting to bend so I'm kind of I'm, I'm used to those so I just I just I'm used to them and I would recommend whatever you draw with, with whatever you're used to um, with the water coloring I normally start off real light and then I just kind of get darker and um, most of the time when I'm water coloring maybe maybe like 70s maybe 40 percent through especially in the beginning like in my mind I'm thinking okay I want to quit okay I want to start over uh, maybe that's bad this is not looking good this is not looking good um, I, I kind of have that thinking I don't know why but it, I, I think like that uh, most of the way through and then towards the end or maybe halfway I don't know where it is but and then I start saying okay this is kind of working out how I imagined it and because I guess that's how it works in watercolor you have to kind of be patient and it's really uh, it's really tempting to get the real dark ones and start start watercoloring um, the exact paint or the exact colors but anyways just it takes a lot of patience and I think I've, I've, that's the same with acrylic too it, it just in the beginning it's like oh man I should start over I think I should this I should just quit and do it another one but uh, just keep at it I guess um, warming up is important in the beginning I forgot to mention I did uh, I didn't have like Nate's book, but I went to his, um, I went to actually his website. I think that's where I went. I didn't go to his Facebook. I went somewhere. Maybe I Googled, but I, I did get a few sketches from him. I looked at him and I was studying them and I even uh, like try to copy a few of them on my scratch paper just to kind of get my hand loose and kind of um, comfortable drawing those way extreme drawings like the overall shapes and things like that um, and then I and then I started sketching um, I wrote some notes here started uh, I drew the main features watercolor mixing that's important so like when you're watercoloring have a sketch paper on the side and make sure the colors are correct um, so like if you're mixing something uh, test it on another sheet of watercolor paper or just some regular paper test it to see if that's the color and then eventually you won't need that sheet because you kind of get accustomed to, to seeing the colors on the palette and you won't really need that later. Um, but anyways, I heard someone a few days ago in a video, don't know his name, but he said something very important. He said that he, he, he tends to teach people or he feels that people are doing a lot more rendering than they are the under sketching. In other words, people are spending so much time on like rendering and making it look pretty and, and spending all their focus on that instead of uh, sticking to focusing on like the under sketch you know having strong features or having having a really good likeness or exaggerations um, and I agreed with that and I thought that was really good and he said a lot of times the digital artists um, they tend to do that they they get a quick sketch and they go right to rendering because they're so excited and uh, but you know it's important that we, we focus on that so anyways digital is just a tool but uh, it's it's good that we focus on like um, you know the most important things, which is the foundation. So, anyways, thanks for watching.